Get in the truck now! Pennsylvania v. Mims, you have no authority. Get in the truck! Gonna... Hello, justice enthusiasts. On the U.S. Corrupt Cops channel, we're delving into a case where corrupt cops have wielded weapons against innocent individuals. Join the conversation by subscribing, liking, and sharing to spread the message of the need for transparency and accountability in law enforcement. If you like this video, press 1. Thank you for supporting U.S. Corrupt Cops. On March 20th, 2023, three auditors were driving from Colorado Springs to Denver. Deputy Kyle from the Douglas County Sheriff's Office was driving next to them on the freeway, even though he was technically outside his usual jurisdiction by about 20 miles. The auditors were in the express lane, going 70 miles per hour, a bit under the speed limit because of a slower vehicle. They managed to pass the slower vehicle, but one auditor expressed disapproval with a thumbs down. Deputy Kyle didn't like the speed difference, so he closely watched them and eventually pulled them over a few miles later when they re-entered his jurisdiction. Speed limit is 990. Sign that says don't cross those double whites. What? You passed me at well over 85. No, I my car paces. So. Matter of fact, I was pacing that car until you passed me. Alright, and you're still not supposed to cross those lines. You got your you got your license registration insurance? You are in Douglas County. Yes. But Deputy Kyle 0816. Yes, it is. From the South County line to North County line is Douglas County. Are you alleged that you saw me going I saw you cross two double white lines, not once but twice, and it's on camera. I am in my jurisdiction. No, you are now. You crossed those past Toma. I did. For the last 10 miles, we've been in Douglas County. What? Mile marker 163. From the Douglas County line. You're at the 174. I need your license. one of two ways. It can go very easy or it can be very difficult and take a very long time. You can make it take a long time by not cooperating. I am not getting aggressive. You're the one sitting here. I'm recording everything as well too. All right? You're the one sitting here not wanting to cooperate with everything I'm saying. All right? And you know what? Actually, I read your policy. That was how you guys are supposed to have a Not supposed to have what? I don't have a tip in. Alright. Where's the insurance? Okay, so I gotta get the insurance on my phone. Hang on the vehicle, 
I'll be back with you. 2. Debbie Kyle accuses a driver of speeding and making an illegal lane change, both traffic violations. Normally, law enforcement needs a valid reason to pull someone over, often based on a minor violation. The driver denies speeding, but admits to the lane change. If the lane change indeed happened, Deputy Kyle had a legitimate reason to stop the vehicle. However, Kyle's behavior becomes more intense during the encounter, getting increasingly agitated when the driver doesn't quickly hand over the requested documents, resulting in aggressive retaliation. Oh, he could probably get me for going into a double yellow. He's not getting me for this. Double white. Double white. Double white yeah. yeah, but he should be pulling over the guy who's holding up the traffic on 70. Yeah. Plus, when you pulled him out on going 90, he didn't try to push that any further. He went back to the double white. Right. He's going to write me a ticket for something. Oh, of course. Of course he is. Yeah, because... Absolutely. Oh, yeah. He has to. To show you. He said he's got the power of a cop. You hear what he says? You just follow what I'm doing and this won't take long. Yep. What an animal. Do what you're told. Bow down, lick the booth, do yep. what you're told. Exactly. <laughs> kiss the yeah. boot, this will all go away. Just kiss this boot, just deep throat my boot, and this will all go deep away. Deep throat the boot, it'll go away. That's where we're at, the blue, the blue dot. Yeah, you can get exactly where you're at. And, our, and you can see if we're in, because it was way back there when you went by him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we definitely, that's why he didn't pull me over then. Right. He was that's, like, that's exactly right. So we, he was probably out of his jurisdiction. Yep. I bet you. I'm allowed to get out of the vehicle too, right? Uh, so yeah, it's a, what's called uh, something P Mims. Pennsylvania Pennsylvania V Mims is the case law. So yeah. we so we're allowed to get out. Right? You guys can get out. Pennsylvania V Mims is the case law that says you can get out. They, they, they have no person. they have no control over you guys. Only the only only me. Pennsylvania. Well, I don't know. Are you okay with yeah. that? Pennsylvania v. Mims. Pennsylvania v. Mims. You ready? In the U.S., whether people can get out of a car during a traffic stop depends on Supreme Court decisions. In Pennsylvania v. Mims, the court said police can tell the driver to step out during a lawful traffic stop, citing the need for officer safety. This ruling was extended to passengers in Maryland v. Wilson. However, officers have discretion, and there's no strict rule to make everyone get out. The lack of a specific law on passengers exiting adds to the debate. The situation gets more complicated with things escalating immediately after considering these legal aspects. 4. In this situation, Deputy Kyle aimed his gun at a passenger who was recording him. This suggests he saw the passenger as an immediate threat. The concern here is that if the passenger didn't pose a clear danger, pointing a loaded gun at them might violate their Fourth Amendment rights. This is especially problematic if the alleged crime is minor and nonviolent, or if the person isn't actively resisting arrest. Deputy Carl called for backup, and more units arrived after the passenger went back into the vehicle. He's gonna go record his vehicle. Yeah. Get back in your car! Get in the truck now! Pennsylvania v. Mims, you have no authority. Get in the truck. Are you going to shoot me? Are you going to shoot me? Get back in the truck now. I don't know what's in that truck. I don't know what you're coming out with. He's literally got me at gunpoint. Huh? I was about to go live. He's got a gun on me. Get out. This guy's a f 
I, you might want to go live. Go live. Please Should go I? live. Yes, please go live. Please go live. This guy just pulled a pistol on me. <laughs> All right, guys, so we went live. Uh, this officer just had it, uh, J-Town uh, at gunpoint. So now we're going live because this guy, like I said, is ready to sh shoot us, man. Ready to shoot somebody. I definitely want to go put a complaint in now. Oh, we're definitely putting Absolutely. a complaint in. That is crazy, that ridiculous. Is nuts. Sorry. That is crazy. Freaking nuts. No, I've never had much. a cop point a gun at me before. That's the first time ever. In this situation, Deputy Kyle aimed his gun at a passenger who was recording him. This suggests he saw the passenger as an immediate threat. The concern here is that if the passenger didn't pose a clear danger, pointing a loaded gun at them might violate their Fourth Amendment rights. This is especially problematic if the alleged crime is minor and nonviolent, or if the person isn't actively resisting arrest. Deputy Carl called for backup, and more units arrived after the passenger went back into the vehicle. You're code three now. So he's at where? Where, uh... He's not, he's past that. He's on the frontage right now. You are on the frontage? Yeah, you want me to take frontage. Yeah, no, I wanted you to take frontage. Okay, you're good. I thought you were still on the highway. No. Okay, yeah, no, you're taking frontage is good. You'll be right there. Because, like, Jazz had to go back to the 174 and flip around that way. So am I, though. That's why I'm thinking you didn't. No, you shouldn't have to. You're going to take frontage, and you're going to be able to go right to freaking sky view. Copy, break, 100 point. I'm going to have to go down this hill. Sorry, I'm going to go. I love you, bye. Okay. Just went live because I don't know if this guy is gonna shoot us or why. I grabbed my dogs. I got the dogs with me. Put him down here for safety in case he starts opening fire on us. This is crazy, man. Pulled a gun on us for getting out of the vehicle with a camera. That's it. Not pull a gun because we were like, you know, robbing somebody or something like that. No, because because he didn't like it because I wouldn't give him my ID. I just put it to the window and then I would. And then he was trying to grab my registration. I, I pulled it back and he gets all. Basically, you better lick the boot and do as I say. This can go one two ways. Go easy or go hard. Stop. Continuing on from this, as if Deputy Carl hadn't had his fill of retaliating against the auditors, he chose to unnecessarily exert his authority by instructing the driver to exit the vehicle, merely to hand him the ticket. As discussed earlier, the Pennsylvania versus Mims case clarified that an officer can legally order an individual to exit a vehicle as long as the stop is lawful. However, in this instance, despite Deputy Carl being within his legal authority, it's evident that this action could be perceived as an abuse of power, an attempt to establish dominance over the auditors, or anyone daring to challenge his authority. I want to speak to a supervisor. Step out of the car. Step out. Am I under arrest? No, you need to step out of the car so we can finish this. Why do I have to? Because you're on a traffic stop? And I have every right to pull you out of this car. You are detained. Yes. By law, you're detained and you have to step out if I ask you to. What? Well, I'm asking. 
asking someone else. You're on a live stream. That's fine. Yeah, you got like uh, 300 That's fine. people in here. Step out of I want to speak to a supervisor. You can contact my supervisor when we're done. Step out of the car. Mr. Cordova, step out of the car. I'm giving you a lawful order now. Or you'll get shot. Step back here. Step out or I'll get shot. Is that what it is? Well, you guys jumped out of the car on the traffic stop. Hey, Pennsylvania v. Mims, you have no control over the passengers of the vehicle, man. All right? Do you understand you, that? That's you, case law. You, That's you, case law. You have no control have you, over these passengers. You're going to pull your gun out on them? That's ridiculous, man. What's wrong have you with you? Complied with me? Get a sergeant out stuff. here now. Get a sergeant Here's out here, pile, now. Get a sergeant out here. Here's your ticket. Give me a sergeant now. You pull your gun out on us. Unacceptable, man. What's wrong with you? Contact my office if you want to speak to my No, we're supervisor. going straight there if you're not going to get okay. a supervisor out here right now. Clown. Pull a gun out on a woman because she gets out of the vehicle. Right. She has a lawful right to do okay. that. That's all I Pennsylvania v. Mims, you moron. Okay. You're, you're okay. done, buddy. Okay. You don't do that. What's wrong with you? You can get back Just because you're power tripping. Okay. You're a power tripping. That's what it is. I'm not power tripping. Yeah, you're power tripping. Get you want to pull car. your gun out on her? Get like, in your I, car. Are you going to arrest me if I don't get in? So if I get out, get back in. Which one is it? I don't know what's going on in that car. I can't see through your windows. Do you want me to write a ticket for that too? You're a tyrant. What? Name and badge number. Can I get everyone's name and badge number and I'll get in? You're a tyrant. What's your name and badge number? 2030. 2030, how do you say it? Yeah. How do you say it? Yeah. Number, what's his? Am I going to get shot if I come out of the car? Right now, we're So you prefer or are you going to shoot me? I said I prefer. Okay, well, I want to. Just because we're on my way, it's not safe. Okay, well, I'm going to get out. I want, you, I want your name and badge number. What's your name and badge number, sir? 1718. And what's your, sir? Let's go. Let's go. Okay. And, why, and I want to speak to his supervisor. What? You have it your, all. Huh? You have it all. I want your supervisor. Are you refusing a supervisor? To to my so, you my supervisor. so you're not going to give me a supervisor, but you're going to pull I'm a not, fucking gun on me. Yeah, when you jump out of the car like you did, with the ball reason, in your hand, I don't know what you're doing. On me. I don't know if you have a gun or Are what. you kidding me? I'm an American citizen. It's a Second Amendment right. And how often does that happen, that people jump out with guns? We are allowed to have guns, you know that. We are allowed to have guns, just like you are. Yeah. And but we're on a traffic stop, and, you know what? and I don't know what's going on. Your policy is you have to get us a supervisor. If, if you do not want to get back in your car and leave, I'm going to take you on obstruction, both of you. Obstruction for Where's what? The crime scene? What? Where's the crime right scene? Right here. Traffic stop's over. I gave you the ticket already. You can let me leave now. Oh, oh I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not here. Obstruction is a physical act. Right. I'm not physically There you go. Okay. Gone you go. Okay. Okay. Gone you go. Okay. All right. So you're going to refuse your supervisor. Okay. okay. Step back. Step okay. out the way. Okay. There's no crime scene. The traffic right. stop's over. Man. Okay. okay. Shame on you. Shame. Shame on you. Tyrants. Tyrants. Government 872QXK. Ultimately, the driver was ticketed for speeding and making an improper lane change as anticipated. The auditor contested both charges in court. The judge ruled in favor of the auditor, dismissing the speeding charge but finding him guilty of the improper lane change. Nevertheless, 
This incident highlights the complex dynamics between law enforcement officers and civilians, which can sometimes involve the abuse of power and unnecessary shows of authority. In this particular case, Deputy Carl's decision to order the driver out of the vehicle merely to issue a ticket seems to exemplify such behavior. Moreover, the fact that he drew a gun on a passenger who exited the vehicle to record the encounter suggests that this situation may have escalated out of retaliation. Additionally, it's worth noting that Deputy Carl allegedly followed the auditors for miles down the freeway. As of the date of this recording, there have been no updates regarding the filing of a complaint or the initiation of a lawsuit. Thank you for tuning into our video exposing corrupt cops. Don't hesitate to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay updated on the latest shocking incidents. Press like if you support us and want to see change in the police system. Share this video to spread the message and urge everyone to stand up against corruption. Let's together build a community of peace and justice. Thank you for joining us on U.S. Corruption.